This is my segment, and it's the 3D printing tip of the month. Uh, and kind of going off of Ken's fixturing, um, something that I don't see a lot of our customers doing is pausing their prints to change colors. And so when I go into a lot of uh, facility tours, uh, people will have fixtures cut out of metal uh, and scrawled on them in Sharpie, uh, which looks amazing, and you can always read their handwriting, is like the part number of the fixture. Uh, and they have shelves and shelves full of these things of fixtures and tooling. Um, but when you go into 3D printing them, you don't have to just use Sharpies. I mean, you, you still can if you want to. Uh, but a little bit more elegant way of doing it is you can easily add pauses in your prints in GrabCAD, and then you can swap out filaments. And so if you're printing a black fixture, you can put white text on it with uh, 3D printing just by changing the, uh, the filament. And then that way it's like a, a permanent melted to the, uh, the fixture labeling so that everyone can read it. It looks more professional. It's a it's a good thing that you guys should do. That's, That's cool. actually displayed on our regular podcast location, uh, right next to the 450, on that little uh, little cart. That that's is that what you're talking about? I think yeah. that there's like there's white lettering on that black bin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's a that's a project that I did I don't know, probably a year ago at this point, where um, our process for changing tips over in the Fortis. Uh, you change tips every time you change materials uh, to prevent cross-contamination of the plastics, if no one out there knew that. Um, so we were very unorganized with how we had our tools. Uh, sometimes they would end up at someone's desk. Sometimes they would end up you know, on different tables and different surfaces, and I wanted to try to fix that. And so I made a nice little cart organizer. That way everything has a labeled location that you use to change tips and do the XY calibration process for the Fortis. And uh, Ben will take the, the editing uh, work of putting some, some pictures of that uh, in the video. Um, Why I was are you giving me more work? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I was ben. just gonna let everyone imagine it. <laughs> no, uh, I know you better than that. You want, you want everyone to have a really good picture of what this, <laughs> this concept is. I, uh, I actually drew up a, a sample fixture when I was in the office earlier today and I took some uh, screen captures of uh, GrabCAD as I was adding the pauses and stuff. So if you're Perfect. if you're really uh, shooting for the stars here, maybe you'll uh, you'll edit that in. Uh, no, if well, not, I can it, share my screen right now. No, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's uh, it doesn't do much for our audio listeners though. So I'll leave that up to you whether or not you think uh, it's actually worth putting putting in the video. Maybe it warrants a, a separate tips and tricks video. All right, uh, for our listeners at home. Uh, for our listeners oh, at home, good. close your eyes and picture a 5,000-pound 3D printer, and that's basically what you'll see. Okay, Ken. <laughs> well, the other thing that is really popular when I, when I teach the pause function in some of our printing classes is beyond just color but inserts. So I know you had mentioned that before you wanted to talk about that, but when we talk about like those drill guides or anything that's going to have threads, and the threads are going to be repeatedly used over and over, can you tap into plastic? Yeah, sure, you can do it. Is it something I want to be like taking a screw out, putting a screw in, taking a screw out, putting a screw in on that same plastic thread? Probably not. So where where pausing features come, come could come in handy is like potentially embedding a bolt or embedding uh, a threaded insert if it's in an odd place. I mean, stuff like that too. Yeah, I agree. Um, the other one that uh, it's it's this exact same process as doing an insert, but magnets, if you have uh, parts that need to uh, kind of loosely adhere to one another, uh, magnets are a really popular one. Uh, probably the most popular is putting a nut into a part, uh, and then you're going to, to bolt it to another part uh, at a separate time in your process. Um, I've seen some electronics, but the only problem with that becomes good luck getting it out if something breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think bolts for fixtures and color change labeling for fixtures is a lot more practical for probably most of the people uh, in our viewership. Maybe I don't know. Um, if Question you are you. watching this, 
Is there a danger with putting a magnet in? Like, will it fly up and like attach to your printer? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we did have one case with specifically with our machines, small magnets that you can get like at the store that you put on like a, a fridge or a chalkboard. Not a problem. Um, I did have one case where I was talking with a company that wanted to use super magnets and embed those in parts. Now, the build tray on most of our machines is metal, so we don't know if it would damage the machine, but good luck getting the part off the bed. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about the print bed. I was more thinking of the, the print head yeah. itself. Yeah. And my first everything, thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything's made of metal. Um, my first thought was it's stainless steel tips, and so... It probably wouldn't, depending on the grade of stainless, which I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, I know that some stainless are reactive, and then some are non-magnetic. But so I guess it depends. Okay, what's the worst case scenario for adding a magnet? Ken, I'm leaving this one up to you, man. What's the worst case <laughs> scenario imaginable? Say you put just like a, a a fifty pound neodymium magnet in your print and you're reckless, so you don't even put like a little dab of super glue on the print when before you press it in. What what's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> you break your printer? I don't know. You could break your printer. Uh, don't do that, Ben. You heard it from three. I had to go look engineer. up neodymium. <laughs> neodymium. I had no idea. I did not know how to say it. Neodymium. That's that was my guess, but. <laughs> That's, uh, that's why I'm here, guys, to, to bring the really important parts of this podcast, like saying names of magnets. Um, that's my <laughs> and, contribution and to the world. I look to you for heightened vocabulary. <laughs> well, as an engineer, uh, and engineers aren't typically known for their vocabularies, uh, it means a lot <laughs> to me, Kevin, thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this month's CAD Dimensions 3D Printing Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure to share it with all of your friends and family. I'm sure they would love to hear about 3D printing also and uh, all about what we're doing for the, the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Um, subscribing is free if you guys didn't know that, and then you'll get little notifications whenever we publish a new video so that you don't miss the next podcast. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay Have safe. Have a good day, everybody. See ya. That was pretty good. Cut. Cut. <laughs>